So when it comes to printing shelf labels, we have a few options. As you can see, I'm in item maintenance. The first option we have is to just print an ad hoc label for a product that might be missing a label. So to do that, we just find the item. We'll print a label for our trusty Coca-Cola two liter, double click. And in our options menu, we have the option to print a label. You can print one immediately, or you can flag it for a label. So next time when you generate labels automatically, this product will come out with a label. But if we want to print one straight away, we can just hit the print button. You choose how many number of labels you want. Let's say we want five labels. If you have more than one label style, you can select from the list, but typically that's the default label style will be automatically populated. And then we hit save. The next thing you'll see is a preview. You can see that there are five pages because this is a, I've requested five labels and this is a single page label. But if you hit continuous, you can see there are my five labels that will print. And to print them, we hit print. You get the option to confirm the printer again, but normally we just leave that the way it is. And in this case, we'll just print everything that we've asked for. And then you hit print. As you can see, you're notified with a toast message that your job has been added to a queue. We can close this window now and continue with our next task. And those labels will automatically be printed. The other way to print shelf labels is to generate them based on a few options. So if we go into our menu, under shelf labels and talkers, you can see shelf labels here. This same logic that I'm applying now for shelf labels, you can transfer to shelf talkers and offer talkers as well. But we'll focus on shelf labels for the minute. And then in future videos, we'll talk about shelf talkers and offer talkers. So under shelf labels, you can see generate. Once you generate them, you can then print them. If you need to reprint them, you can as well. And if you want to erase labels that may have been generated that you don't want, you can also erase the labels. Under our generate, we have options to generate automatically. So anything that's changed either through host or manually, you can request labels to be generated automatically. If you have a number of labels that you need uh, that haven't had changes, you can request them manually. This allows you to add one by one. And you can also use PDEs, either the Metcash PDE or GM Mobile, to request labels for products and generate them using that data. So to use the automatic options, we have to make some price changes. So let's change our normal cell to 290. and hit save. Because this is in a family, it's asking us to change the price of all of our family items. You can just hit okay here. Let's go and change a couple of other products, maybe the 10 by 375 mil cans. We can adjust the description if we need to. That will also request a label. Changing the department, the description, activating a product, all of those things, all of those actions flag a label to be printed. So you would continue your maintenance and as you change things, a label will automatically be flagged for generation. The same applies when you use the price book editing mode. If you make a number of changes, those things will automatically have a label requested when you generate automatically. So to generate automatically, we come into the menu and we choose generate shelf labels automatically. 
Another point of difference between grocery manager and smart retail is that with smart retail, the changes made to items are tracked by that user. So when you come in to generate shelf labels automatically, by default, you're only going to be getting labels for the items that you changed. So using our previous examples, if we have Mary and Bob and Mary changes five products and Bob changes 30 products, if Mary comes in to generate her own labels, she'll only get five and Bob's labels will be left for Bob to print. Depending on your permissions, you can just choose all users changes. And in this case, in that scenario, you would get all 35 labels, Mary's and Bob's. So in our case, we'll just use my changes only. We can also choose a preview if we need to, and then hit OK. Here you can see they're the products that I've changed. To actually print them, we can take the preview out, press OK. Six items require labels, yes. And now you can see here, your print shelf labels are split up into your own labels, labels by the style that's been selected, and individual labels by user, if you specifically want to print a selected user's labels. So you can print the labels by just double clicking on this row, and you'll see the same preview as we saw before with the, the page count. And But this time, based on our automatic selection, we've got different products that require labels. Alternatively, you can just select it once here, and then if you do have different label styles, you can choose a different style if required. Maybe the wrong style was selected when you generated those labels. So you do have the option to change the style here and the printer, if you've got a different printer that might print the labels. Maybe you, one of your printers is, is faulty. So after we double click, we don't want to make any of those changes. We have our preview and then we can hit print. Normally on the first go, you would just use all, but if you had a paper jam and you wanted to print from the third or the fourth label, you can say start from page three here. Um, alternatively, if potentially two pages failed, you could say print pages two, two, four. But normally we would just choose all and then hit print. Again, you get your notification and we can close this window. And once those labels have been printed, this label will disappear from the list. But you don't have to wait for this, you can go off and do something else. Alternatively, we can also generate shelf labels manually. So when we're in here, we get our full item list with our column chooser that we have in item maintenance, and we can just come in and type in our items and find them, double click, and then we get add shelf label, and we can confirm how many we want, as well as confirm the label style to use. With Smart Retail, we can also double click something that's inactive. In Grocery Manager, we can only generate a label for products that are active. In Smart Retail, if you double click an inactive product, you can also choose to activate this item and then request a label. So you can go through here and choose the products that you want to label for. And when you're done, there's a couple of options. You can come in here and choose to view a summary of the labels. This will show you all the labels that have been generated and unprinted, and you can individually select users as well. You can also come into here to view the existing labels that have been generated. These are all of the labels that have been generated and printed previously, and you can see here that these are my unprinted labels. So if I use a filter, I can see my unprinted labels, when it was generated, and what type of change it was. If I no longer want one of these labels, I can just use the, the delete button. And if I only want one of these Coca-Cola, I can edit and say, I only want one. So when you're happy with your label generation, we come in and choose options and then print. And here we are back to the print labels. So we again, we can double click on this row 
to get our preview and then we can hit print. Just a couple of other options. If you use GM Mobile and you've requested labels using the collect batch, we can come into generate labels by PDE. We get our options to choose to existing labels. Normally that's enough to press OK. With GM Mobile collect mode, if you send the batch using labels, you will come into here and go previous PDE download. And here you'll be able to see all of the PDE data that's come down from the, from the PDA. So you can choose your file, choose single shelf label or based on the label count, and then hit OK. That will then generate the labels based on what was in the PDE data. Eight items require labels, yes. And here we have our labels, which we can then print. Another option is to erase labels. So for example, you've done a whole heap of changes that you don't want labels for. You can come into the menu and choose erase shelf labels. And this will erase any labels that have not been Un, have not been printed. You do have the option to erase your own and depending on your permissions, you can erase other people's labels as well if they have been, not been printed. So let's press yes. So now the erase labels will not require to be printed, will not be required to be printed. The last option if, for example, you need to reprint some labels that were previously printed, maybe the wrong style was selected, maybe the wrong printer was selected, you can come into reprint labels. What this screen shows you is a list of all of the label batches that have been sent to printers. So, for example, you can see what label style was used, how many, and what user generated them and printed them and when they were printed. So if you want to, you can just come in here and double click on a row and that will bring the preview back up and then you can print. You can also single click the row and press reprint and get the option to change the style if you require as well as change the printer if you require.